The island of Madagascar served as an extremely strategic and research-rich island for many centuries. Colonial powers that controlled this island had massive influence not only over the region, but could assert naval influence all along the Horth of Africa. Attempts of conquest had been made by European powers off and on for centuries, but a largely united and isolationist native culture managed to always beat them back. But it was only a matter of time before their luck would run out. In this episode, we will be discussing the French annexation of Madagascar. The Marina Kingdom had existed on the island since the mid-16th century. This kingdom would be the one to eventually unify the whole island. The Marinia Kingdom had gradually expanded its control over much of the island, known as Amerna. However, by the late 18th century, the island was still split between four main kingdoms. In 1787, Prince Rambosalama gained the throne to one of these kingdoms, and set its sights towards unification. It wouldn't be he that managed this objective though, his son Radama I would be the first to achieve such a feat. With supplemented western tech, Radama went west and gradually expanded the territory might of his empire, all throughout the early 1800s. Radama also established British missionary schools in the capital, but many of the population didn't take terribly kindly to the Christian religion. And while they weren't openly hostile, conversions were much slower than in other locations. The British attempted to have great influence via the missionary school, but it largely fell flat. The kingdom worked to keep itself very culturally unique, and outside of some minimal weaponry, trade, and that one missionary school, they bulked against European powers to a large degree. Radama would die at the young age of 35 in 1828, largely due to his many years of campaign and heavy, heavy amounts of alcohol. Radama didn't name his successor, and while custom dictated that his eldest son would take the throne, his son died while in transit to the capital. The news of his son's death was kept secret for a number of days in fear of reprisal and rebellion. A major military general in the Marinia Kingdom found this out, and with supporters put Radama's wife, Queen Ranavalona, the first to the throne. The 33 year of Ravalona was characterized by struggle to preserve the cultural isolation of Madagascar from modernity. She called much of the outside trade agreements and promoted a stance of self-reliance as a nation. Early in her reign, the queen took steps to distance Madagascar from the purview of European powers, first pointing an end to the friendship treaty with the British, then placing increasing restrictions on the activity of the missionaries, who operated schools for basic education and trade schools were taught in addition to the Christian religion. In 1835, she forbade the practice of Christianity among the population, and within a year after, nearly all foreigners had left her territory. She continued the conquest of her young husband, which eventually cemented her rule over the whole island. The constant campaign and high death rates of laborers meant that the population as a whole nearly halved between 1820 and the 1870s. Her son and heir Radama II signed a very unpopular charter that allowed the French access to much of the island's natural resources. As the queen aged, the French were eager to see Radama to the throne viewing him as a great way to expand French influence over the whole island. They persuaded him to sign a treaty in French, a language he wasn't overtly fluent in, that granted France the ability to intervene in the island militarily if unrest occurred. The French had this as a pretext, but would only do so if the British allowed, as the British had a much stronger foothold on the island itself than the French at the time. A plot to overthrow the Queen and install Radama was attempted in 1857, but it fell apart before it even began. The Europeans in the court's palace were confined to their chambers, and eventually forced out of the country some years later. Radavalona died in her sleep in 1861, and following this, a series of coups occurred for many years, largely due to the aristocrat being against the non-isolationist way that the monarch tended to act. 
This would continue until the reign of Rana Valona III, the last monarch of Madagascar. In the early 1880s, the French right wing gained power in the nation, and they sought to invade the island to curb British influence, aiming to put the islands under direct French control. The revocation of the Lambert Charter and the Nazi letter to Napoleon III was used as a pretext for invasion in 1883. The invasion was helped in the fact that a group of the native population, the Sokolovian minority, remained largely loyal to the French. When the French invaded the northern end of the island, Rana Valona III sent her armies out to meet them head-on, contacting the German Empire for assistance, as the two nations had cited Treaty of Friendship earlier that year. But during the Berlin Conference, Madagascar was listed under as the French sphere of influence, so neither the Germans or the British pledged support for the island nation, so the outdated Madagascarians were the only ones able to fight against the French. Now, supposedly there were three years of fighting, but I couldn't find any battle information at all, or any battles or warring or anything that took place during this time, so I have no idea what actually happened. All I know is that it involved a lot of baguettes and probably a lot of white wine. I don't know. But in 1887, Rana Valona and her allies simply couldn't match the French, and they eventually surrendered being forced to sign the Peace of Tamatav, which gave the French control over Diego Suarez, as well as to pay 600,000 gold francs to Lambert's heirs. In addition, the French were now able to conduct the foreign affairs of Madagascar, while the British relinquished all claims to the land. The treaty essentially established the Mernier Kingdom as a French protectorate, but of course, Rana Valona didn't agree to this, and since the end of the First War, was plotting another war against the occupiers trying to curry favors from various Western powers to assist them in their independence. In December of 1894, the French declared war again and invaded and occupied the major ports of Thomasina in the east and Mahajina in the west. While some troops were landed, it wasn't until May of 1895 that the main French corps of 15,000 arrived. They campaigned during the island's rainy season and it very much devastating to the French forces. However, as soon as the French landed and started marching, a series of revolts against the island's government occurred, which severely weakened the island defenses, and added another 6,000 men to the French ranks. The first major battle took place later in the year, after the French columns nearly lost a third of their numbers due to disease. The two main battles occurred at Sarasota on June the 29th of 1895, and at Andriyama on August the 22nd, both resulting in French victories, and the elite native units being largely decimated by French guns. In September, the French had managed to reach the capital. She was forced to sign another treaty, saying that the whole of Madagascar was a French protectorate. Originally, she was going to stay as a figurehead on the island, but the French government viewed her as too much of a risk for rebellion, and instead exiled her to Algeria in 1897. Rebellions continued on for many years after this, which was only quelled in 1906. And with that, the French annexation of Madagascar was completed.